Hello everyone out there in our badminton community. Welcome to another awesome episode of the badminton podcast. So whether you're a first time listener or you've listened to us many times, thanks so much for tuning in. For those listening for the first time on this podcast, we talk about badminton. We talk to players of all levels, including international professional players. And we talk about topics that can hopefully help help you in your life and in badminton as well. My name's Jeff. And I'm Henry. We're both the co-founders of Alantware, the brand that gives badminton players an alternative to that unsightly, colourful, patent conventional clothing so that they can wear clothes that make them feel confident and stylish anywhere. In short, we give them gear that makes you feel great on and off the court. We're also really about bringing the badminton community together so we can share the love of the sport with everyone that we know and help you with your game as well our overall vision is to show the world how incredible badminton is because it is actually an awesome awesome sport and i know everyone listening and watching this really does appreciate that so you can check us out and shop at www.volantware.com there are heaps of free resources there as well that can help you with your game as well you can also follow us on our social media at volantware v-o-l-a-n-t-w-e-a-r Now, just before we get started, we just wanted to ask all the listeners and watchers for a little bit of help. So Henry and I love hosting this podcast and we do it for the community because it's basically fully self-funded and it's supported by our full-time jobs. So that's why we're asking for some support where you can pledge just a little bit of money, just a few dollars per month that really helps us to keep releasing regular and high quality episodes for you. We've already had some people that we've that have pledged and we've given shout outs to on the podcast. So if you'd like your own shout out and you'd like to support us, you can do so by visiting patreon.com slash the badminton podcast. And the link will be in the description below. So for today's podcast, let's get into it. We've got two awesome guests that for the people watching can see, you can see them on the screen now and they're just across the, across the Tasman sea from us in New Zealand. So Henry, you're up. Thanks, Jeff. So first off, we have Anona Pack, just there, I think. (laughs) She's a 26-year-old mixed and women's doubles player who has represented New Zealand on multiple occasions, including the Suderman Cup and Oceania Oceania Teams Championships. With her partner, Oliver Layden Davis, she is the number one in mixed doubles in New Zealand and is ranked 70th in the world, and they're both vying for the 2021 Tokyo Olympics. She's also ranked third in women's doubles uh, in New Zealand as well. Outside of badminton, she's a polyglot, someone who can write and speak several languages. And based on her Instagram, she's definitely a dog lover. (laughs) So Stalker. (laughs) (laughs) I've I've checked her out. Uh, So next to her is Abhinav Manota, more commonly known as Manny. He's the number one in New Zealand in men's singles and men's doubles and is ranked 113th and 67th in the world, respectively. He has represented New Zealand at the Suderman Cup, Oceania Teams event and World Championships. He too is competing to qualify for the now 2021 Tokyo Olympics. And to other players, he's sometimes known as the smiling assassin. Look at him smile there. So, <laughs> Anona and Manny, welcome to the episode, the episode of the Badminton Podcast and thank you for coming on. Thank you for having us. So, Manny, first of all, what's this smiling assassin thing? Um, I'm not <laughs> too sure where that came from, but... Um, <laughs> Apparently, it started in the NZ Open 2018, um, where I got interviewed by the um, TV NZ, and that's where they told me that I got called Smiling Assassin. I didn't even know before that, but yeah, <laughs> they started calling me Smiling Assassin because apparently I smile on course, smile outside, and yeah, whatever I do, I just smile, so they just call me Smiling Assassin. I think okay. a genuine happy guy. Also, because um, <laughs> there's a shot, Marnie's specialty shot. It's like the killer drop shot or the killer <laughs> slice. So, like, it breaks both ankles, so we call him the smiling assassin of that shot. <laughs> the, the smiling ankle breaker. <laughs> so, so, which shot is it? Is it from the forehand side? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, forehand I think, slice cross? Yeah, I think mm-hmm. so. Yeah. 
Okay, nice. And Anona, we're going to jump into this a little bit later because we're going to be talking about COVID and the effect of COVID on you. But with the languages that you speak, um, we heard from another article on badminton Oceania that you just decided to randomly pick up German because you're thinking, I already know four other languages. I may as well just pick up another one. What's the story there? Okay, so I've learnt, I learned German in my first year of high school, but kind of dropped it because I chose French and took it all the way up to year 13. So I was thinking, okay, since I already learned French and I learned the basics of German, might as well just carry on and learn a few more words so I can order food and um, travel, <laughs> like easier to travel around. That was kind of, yep. Yeah. 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 We were in Austria and we were about to go to Germany before it got cancelled as well. Yeah. I, right, I so- learned German in in for one and a half years in high school, I can remember how to count to 20 and I can remember how to say like all the swear words, but that's basically it. <laughs> Those are the words you learn first, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, you, when you've got the dictionary when you're like 14 years old, what do you do? You just look up the swear words, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's us. And I just thinking, I, I, learned, I learned how to order some like traditional German meals and some sightseeing Sausage, places. Sausages, beer. <laughs> You have to know what you're eating first, right? <laughs> Before you swear at them, you need to order your food, right? It's yep. true. It's okay. true. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, when uh, we can finally start traveling again, Anona, you can go all around the world, and you'll probably be speaking ten language ten languages by that time. Well, last year when we were in China for Sudaman, I was the team translator, even though we had our own guide with us. So <laughs> yeah, we had to order food for the team because they didn't know what <laughs> food was on the menu. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big risk in, in, in places like China where there's a lot of uh, interesting cuisines available. Yeah. So they just, <laughs> I just ask them the basics. Do you want chicken, beef, pork, or seafood? And then from there on, I'll be like rice or noodle, soup, or <laughs> whatever. And then, yeah, that's just eliminate. So you- you, you basically created like your own flow chart of ordering for ease. Right? Like a or B, B. Okay. Then it's like, it's like when you go to the optometrist, like a one or two is clearer and then you, one or two is clearer and then you've just got like a flow chart. Okay. You're going to end up at one ton noodle soup. That's, that's the end one by the time you get there. You want rice noodle. Okay. Easy. <laughs> It's like choose your own adventure. Uh, this is great. Um, cool. So, guys, let's let's jump into the reason why we're here recording the podcast today, and that's to talk to both of you about, of course, your badminton stories and careers, but also to introduce the listeners to the New Zealand Badminton League, which is something that's really exciting happening over there at the moment. So, can you tell us a bit about it? You got this. Uh, so we play two nights every week and there's four teams and they're uh, six players and yeah. each team. Um, so it's all from the New Zealand squad. Um, but yeah, it's basically, it's like a COVID product. Um, okay. So because we were in the lockdown and that's when they introduced that um, league. And then we, we didn't know that time that it's going to happen so or quickly. so quickly. And then, we weren't allowed to have that time many people uh, in the mm-hmm. hall anyway. So it was, that's why um, So it wasn't focused towards the spectators as in like being there in person. Uh, it was more focused on um, watching televised that on Sky Sports and on YouTube channel uh, Sky Sport Next as well. But yeah, um, so we play basically twice a week, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, and it's, it goes for seven weeks. And we play... Uh, each team twice. Each team twice, yep. And on the seventh yep. week, we will play playoffs. Um, playoffs, which is first and second and third and fourth. Yep. Um, but, yeah. That's okay. about it, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, COVID product where badminton Zealand's come up and said, hey, we need something to give to the players while we can't travel overseas. Um, how has the whole thing been? Have you found that it, it, the Tuesday and Wednesdays have been something to look forward to and have helped you kind of like put you back in the tournament setting, which we're missing now at the moment because of COVID. Yeah. It sort of gets you in the mind of, okay, so Monday is more like a preparation day. Mm -hmm. And if you play on Tuesday, we also have training in the morning so that it kind of mirrors what happens in the tournament where if you, if you're scheduled in the late afternoon, then you have to find something to do in the morning. So like light jogging or, 
light skill session, just something to do in the morning so you don't sit around and wait for the evening to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Wednesday, since we don't have trainings on Wednesday, but we also have to find something to do during the day so we don't feel stuck or feel sort of lazy or too relaxed before the evening ties. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Cool. But- and so with, um, sorry, money. Yep. Sorry, there, you, there you go. No, no, keep going. Keep going. Um, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, especially for some people, some people go to, you know, um, work and stuff and then, they have to do during during the day. They have to go to work, and then after they go to they go play. Um, so it's a bit different to play like a proper tournament because in the in the tournaments you actually um, going out there and then just thinking about the tournaments um, or competition mm-hmm. or matches. Um, but this this is a bit different. Like we are thinking about the general life at the same time at end of competitions. Yeah. So it's it's it, I think it's really good. Like especially for us at the moment, because um, and for the spectators as well, it's giving them um, something to watch on the TV um, rather than watching highlights. You know, so something something to look forward to, mm. um, and especially for the players as well, and getting the competitive environment as well, um, because we didn't know what's going to happen now since it's quite uncertain about the um, overseas tournaments, international tournaments. We don't know what's going to happen, so I think it's a really good product for us um, to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really great that you guys can continue to play despite, you know, the the border restrictions. In terms of like, you know, what happens at the end of the seven weeks? What are you what are you fighting for? Tell me, tell me. Um, <laughs> so it's, we're basically fighting for um, some money. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So it's the pool of fifteen thousand um, dollars. So the winner, uh, the winner team gets um, seven thousand yeah. dollars, and then the second. Uh, team gets four thousand. It goes down in decreasing order. So, like, yeah. uh, the fourth, like, whoever comes fourth, do, do get a share of the fifteen dollar prize. Oh, yeah. for you. So something. Yeah. Okay. We'll get something anyway. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah that's good. It's that's not about good. the money, and, but yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's more than just the great competition, but uh, it's not. It's not just the money. Each week per match day. Um, there would be someone that gets the MVP of the day, and for that person to have MVP, they'll get a hundred dollars for that night. Oh, cool! Yeah. And also, they are um, uh, so there's an MVP uh, for the league as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there will be yeah, so it'll be end of the league as well. So on the seventh week, they will announce who's going to be the MVP of the league. So are we speaking to two MVPs here. We we were we won once. Yeah, in the won. first week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awesome oh, work. We played each other in the first week, so it was two different uh-huh. things. Yeah. yeah. So okay. is the uh, is the overall MVP for the league? Is that based on acc- the accumulation of the ones you get each week, or is it a separate vote? So they have each each match day. So on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, they will pick three people. So in total, six people per week of, and they allocate the points. So three, two, one. And ah, then, it's at the, the Brownlow. <laughs> MVP of the day gets three points and they win the trophy and they get $100 for, for that tie that yep. they play. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sure. For seven weeks. Yeah. And you just mentioned that you're, you're both on different teams, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are, what, are the, what are the names of these teams and how, how, does, the, how does the actual, like, like, the process of building these teams work? Um, so, I, um, so the teams are basically Huawei Dragons, um, Heitor Hawk, which is the best team ever, <laughs> um, <laughs> One Pure Wolves, and the Tiger Rocket Tigers. Uh, so, uh, BNZ did the legwork there. Um, so, they actually went out to uh, find the sponsors, and then um, so they jumped uh, forward, which we were really lucky to have them. Um, awesome. Especially after the COVID situation, after the lockdown, we weren't sure like who's going to come forward and how much and trust we're going to get. But now we're very lucky to have them. Um, so, yeah. Um, so those, those are the four teams. And even though I'm um, hair to a hawks, I'm still trying to hold that one pure bottle, which is <laughs> which is my actually my girlfriend works for one pure. So, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Nana. Sorry, uh, before the teams were... Uh, put out uh it was during lock it was during lockdown level three where we had little groups of training ses- sessions 
and we would always ask our national coach who's mm-hmm. going to be in the team. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, we would make up these draft lists in different teams and just show them to the coach and be like, are these the teams? And then she'll be like, mm-hmm. I'm not sure. You just have to find out. <laughs> yeah. It's like the build up of the, what's it? Um, suspense. Yeah. The suspense. We're just yeah. like, oh, come on. We want to know who's in our team. <laughs> yeah. So you have to be a member of the national team to be selected. Is that right? Um, I guess I so. so. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But at the same time, it doesn't have to be. Uh, okay. But yep. the more focus towards the uh, inter Scott players so that they yep. can get the opportunity to play some uh, matches and in a Match play. competitive environment. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, so with that, who, who ended up selecting the team? So, and when they selected the team, how did they make it fair? So let's just say they didn't get all of like the one, two, three in every event in one team. Like how is it possible that it, it's fair? We're not sure how they selected the team, but they did tell us that it will all be balanced. So, um, in the beginning, I was like, oh, I won't be in the same team as Mani or Ollie. Just, um, make, make it unbalanced on one side. But I didn't, I didn't know that I would be in the same team with Ollie. And oh, you are in the same team as Ollie. Mani just got booted out. From- yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the separate team. Yeah, I'm in the other team. Yeah. You got shafted. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we didn't <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I, I think you're both team leaders of your team as, as well. Is that correct? Um, well, it does like, yes. um, not really at the same time, but we just, um, go as the senior, as a team, we're yeah. the senior players of the team. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah so, so, players as well at the same time. So yeah. Hmm. Just for completeness, do you by any chance have a list of the team players just so that listeners, if they know, if they know you guys, they can say, okay, this person's in this team. Can, do we have the six players of each team in front of us or in your head? Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll announce too, and then she can announce too as well. So I'll go with my team first, which is Hair to Hawks. Uh, so um, in my team, it's uh, myself, Danny Ode, uh, Ryan Tong, Jasmine, Erina, and Courtney Trella. Um, and the other team is Tiger Broker Tigers, which is um, they have uh, Edward Lau, uh, okay. Dak Ben Wong, uh, Jonathan Curtin, Justine Williagas, um, Sally Fu, and Janice Jang. I know some of their names, but not all of them. <laughs> yep. uh, One Pure Wolves consists of myself, Oliver Layden Davis, Rowan Apolosok, uh, Evan Wong, Josh Fang, and Caitlin Rosario. Our Huawei Dragons have Dylan Sojaza, Adam Jeffrey, Oscar Go, Oscar Guo. Shauna Lee, Alyssa Tagle, and Ashley Tan. Yeah. Cool. So hopefully if uh, anyone's listening out there and, and have heard of these names before, make sure you tune in to the New Zealand Badminton League where you can actually watch uh, potentially some of your favourite players. Um, and now I guess going to the, the more like uh, this technical side of things, I know that the the game structure is a little bit different to your typical 21 game three sets for, for your league. Can you, can you guys give us a bit of a rundown on that as well? So it's a uh, best of three to 11 and, and the golden game, if the tie becomes three all, the golden game is one game to 11. So yeah, basically we have uh, one of each of them um, and then but, um, two we have mixed. two mixed. So the format it looks like uh, so you start with mixed doubles, which is number two. Doesn't um, it doesn't have to be in a ranking order? Like anyone can play number two max, or anyone can play number one max. So I start with mixed doubles, and then it goes to men's singles, women's singles, men's doubles, women's sing- uh, women's doubles, and mixed doubles. Um, so yeah, if if it gets to three all, uh, the tie score, then it goes to golden game, which is only one game to eleven. Um, that that's what makes it very exciting there uh, because yeah it, yeah it gets it's sometimes it's like if you are three two down or if you are three two winning then you still want to win the whole tie without getting mm. to the golden game because it, that's where it gets tricky. Um, so if you win outright, which is like let's say four two five one or six nil, uh, you get you get given three points, and if you win with the golden game, then you get two points. Oh, okay. Win. Yeah, to yeah. And then if you get uh, if you lose with the golden game, you get one point, and if you lose outright, 
then you get zero points. Zero. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So how do you know? So what event is golden game and how do you select that? Do you select that on the go or do you already know that this is the golden game you need uh, to play and you submit that beforehand? So when it gets to three all in the tie, the referee comes on with the coaches and the referee flips the coin. So sort of like at the start of the match, they'll flip the coin, um, the colors are chosen and the coaches will eliminate each uh, event. So okay. they say, okay, I don't want lady singles, uh, women singles. So I take out women singles and the other coach will come in and say, okay, I'm going to take away women's doubles. And then the, the coach come back on and said, okay, taking out mixed doubles and then the other coach will come in and take out the other one and we'll leave with the remaining the event. Yeah. yeah. That's how they choose it. And then, and then and, yeah. and that golden game, anyone can play, even, okay. though, even though you haven't played that event before. So you can play. So for myself, let's say for, for Mine me. Mine is the golden game. <laughs> for me, I, even though I normally don't play doubles um, in, the, in the tie, I play normally mixed and singles. So mm-hmm. even though I don't play doubles, so if it gets to uh, well, uh, men's doubles, then uh, my team can say, okay, now money can go and play uh, men's doubles with someone. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't have to be a, uh, that particular pair who played before in the tie. Yeah. Great. Yeah, and cool. with the short, shorter game format, how long does the whole tie last for? Is it, is it quite short because it's only best of three to 11? We thought it would last quite short. Um, you, we start at 7 PM at nighttime and it mm-hmm. usually, usually finishes around 10 to 10 30. Okay. Uh, we finished quite late last week and our last match, cause we had the golden game as well. So our last match actually started around 10 30. So by the time we finished it was about 10 45. Yeah. We thought it'd be short. And the fun, fun part is in the um, other, in the format is um, so coaches get to uh, say the timeout. So there's no rest in between the, um, and during the game, so like since you, it's it's only up to eleven points, mm. uh, but you don't get any breaks half-time in between breaks, or yeah. any halftime breaks. You only get a break after the game. After That's it. The yeah. first. Uh, but if you are, let's say, if you think okay, you're not playing well, if you're down or something, if you want to break the rhythm, the coaches can say, "I want a timeout," and they yeah. can the hand up, and then they can say a timeout, and then there will be a timeout there. Uh, That's pretty cool. Yeah, so just to just to um, make it more fun and interesting there. Um, yeah, I like it, that. It can be good for the players sometimes, but it can be frustrating for the spectators because um, because the intensity is really going high. Yeah, and, and it yeah. is time. Yeah. It drops, you know. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it drops and sometimes it picks it up and sometimes the like the the game might switch over as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. That's it's yeah, it's it's, re- it's really interesting. It's like the, you could have like one team with just overwhelming momentum on the other team, and yeah. it's just like, hey, hang on, hold up, hold up, give me give me two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Let me cut that short for a bit. Um, yeah, cool. So uh, I don't know if we've covered this already, but when when did the actual league start for for you guys? I know it's a COVID product, but uh, like, where are we at now, and where where do we when do we begin? So we just finished the round four. Uh, we'll be going into the round five next week. Um, so yeah, we started four weeks ago. Yeah, which four is, weeks ago. Um, so it's like right after we got out of lockdown. Um, um, level, start, level, yeah, during our level one lockdown. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah so, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, and at the start because we we couldn't have too much players inside the hall. So mm. only the players and the uh, technical officials and the volunteers that were working for the in the league was allowed in the hall. Yeah. And then the second week, uh, the restriction sort of relaxed a bit. So we were able to bring in some friends and families okay. to watch. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And then cool. now the future weeks, we, um, anyone can come in and watch. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And who's, who's leading at the moment? Who's winning? And who's on the road to that 15, not 15, but like the, the highest amount of prize money? Uh, so after this week's um, results, um, so it's uh, Tiger Broker Tigers uh, with nine points. Um, and uh, it's uh, second on second position is uh, Hair Tour Hawks uh, with seven points. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then is uh, Wolves Tiger Dragons. Green. Yeah, yeah Wolves, Wolves and Dragons are uh, on the... On four points. Four points. Yeah. Third, okay. third, and, third and fourth, yeah. Third equal. Third equal. Okay. okay. Third equal. Well, Just done. to make it sound better. Third equal. <laughs> <laughs> 
Cool. So, so by the time um, this actual episode comes out, we're, we're going to be approximately one week later. Okay. So in terms of people who want to tune in, um, when does the, when does this league run in, run up until, and when will be like that, those final playoffs? Uh, so the finals, 29th. I think, are uh, on the 29th, uh, I mean, 28th and 29th, which is Tuesday and Wednesday, I guess. Um, so if, if, we, if they want to watch the highlights or if they want to watch the recap, they can always go on YouTube uh, and they can search it up. Sky, uh, Sports, Sky Sports Next. Yeah, Sky Sports Next. And, yeah, it will be there uh, forever, I guess. Um, so, yeah, they can watch all the ties there and, yeah, all the action and all the fun fun things. Uh, we did. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, if everyone I, listening, I, oh, sorry, you go, Jeff. Yeah. So if, for everyone listening, so 28th and 29th, yeah, money and yeah, Anna. Yeah, that's, 28th and 29th of July. Sorry. 28th, yeah. 29th of July, 2020, just in case you're listening to this in yes. a different year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you just need to search on YouTube sky sport next yeah. on, on YouTube. And we'll put that yeah. in the description yeah. as well, just so you know. Excellent. And you can also follow the, um, the league's Instagram page. Is that correct? That's yeah. correct. They have an Instagram page. They have a Facebook page as well. And you can also um, follow the teams as well. Yeah. Uh, so, so each, each franchise team has their own Instagram. Mm-hmm. Instagram mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Where, we, where we promote ourselves. You can follow all four of us as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have all, uh, is like 20 different Instagram handles <laughs> <laughs> in the description, in the description below. <laughs> yeah. We awesome. all have access to the Instagram um, our own Instagram team page. So oh, okay. We try put up fun stories and try get everyone to be um, be in it with us. And like and, how we prepare, yeah. what do we do beforehand? Um, yeah, how do we warm up and that sort of stuff. If you have, if they have any questions uh, from us, like they, they can ask us and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. So for fans of the uh, Hey Tour Hawks and uh, was it One Pure Wolves? <laughs> yeah um make sure make sure you ask reach out follow follow money and an owner on their journey um and yeah it's super exciting um but let's let's move let's move on to talking a bit about you guys as individuals because uh i think it's it's important to get to know the badminton players behind the new zealand badminton league um and let's well, let's let's first start with um with you an owner um, can you please give the audience and me and Jeff a bit of a background as to how you got started with badminton and, and why you love playing? Uh, so it started with my mom tr- making me try out all these different sports, table tennis, squash, swimming, and also the academic side like piano, art lessons. But I'm, I'm the type that can't sit still. Like every time you sit on the piano and play for an hour, I can't do that. I have to stand up every 10 minutes and walk around and run around and then come back <laughs> and again. So me sitting on a piano for, for more than 20 minutes is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> and with the swimming lessons, uh, winter is too cold. I don't, like, I don't like it when it's too cold. So yeah, badminton's like the middle ground. I can move around and be warm at the same time. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. So how old were you then? Uh, I started, so holiday program started at, eight and then the coach during that time was like hey you actually have a um, bit of potential and talent you should try join the junior squads so I then I joined the junior squads and the normal basic training and then got into the rep team the junior rep teams at 12 and since then played competitively and first mm-hmm. international tournament was 16 when um, New Zealand Badminton Open was still KLRC if you yes see. Yes. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was first tournament international. Cool. Awesome. Yep. And Marnie, you're up. Cool. Um, I don't have that interesting story, but um, yeah, I started quite late, I would say. Um, so I'm, I'm from India, basically. Um, so when I was uh, there, um, so my dad plays badminton as well. He played uh, competitively as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was, I started. Um, playing cricket, uh, but then um, <laughs> the cricket was um, basically after the school, I used to go out and then in the ground and I, I'll play cricket and stuff with my friends. Uh, but then I sort of um, made some troubles um, when I, while I was <laughs> playing cricket. Um, 
<laughs> so my mum said that to my father that, okay, now nah, I think you should take him to badminton and then, you know, like, um, ho- ho- hopefully he picks it up and something like that. And then, so he took me to badminton and then I would just watch him play. And yeah, uh, and eventually I met some friends there and then I started playing with them. And yeah, from, from that point on, I was literally um, didn't go back to cricket at all. And then also, I don't even know why, I just don't like cricket anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, I read that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's also part of the reason because um, cricket gets all the attention over all the mm. other sports uh, in India. Um, so yep. we have whatever, whatever you do, even though you're super good in other sports, you still don't get enough attention um, mm. if you're not in the cricket. Uh, so yeah. that's the reason I don't really like cricket anymore. Uh, but yeah, now that's how I started playing badminton, and I started playing badminton when I was thirteen, which is uh, considerably quite old. Quite late, yeah. Mm, um, yep. mm. But yeah, that's that. That was a, when I first started. I started um, with a local tournament, basically. <laughs> yeah, um, I played a local tournament, and then um, so there's a bit of fun story as well in there. Um, so I, when I played my first tournament, I could not serve because I was so nervous. I never played a tournament before, and never I was never in a competitive environment before, so I couldn't serve. And then during the game, uh, I looked at my dad, and I was like. Like in, in my crying voice, I was like, I can't serve. <laughs> he, he just asked me, just keep going, it's okay. It's your first honor, it's your first game, just keep going. Whatever you can do, just do your best. And then, but I, I, yeah, I kept going. And then when I came out uh, after the match, of course, I lost. Um, but <laughs> um, yeah, when I came out, I cried the whole afternoon, <laughs> yeah. which wasn't a good experience. But <laughs> I, think, I think after that match, I think I, Learn from that match quite a lot um, from, from the first match. Um, yeah. And yeah, I fell in love ever since. Mm. Awesome. How, many, how many hundreds or thousands of hours of serving practice did you go through after that match? Oh, don't even ask. I would say more than 10,000 hours now. <laughs> 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 and I can basically do it with my closed eyes. So yeah, it's okay yeah. for me. <laughs> so, it's, yeah. so it's only serve or cross last training. That's all. It's just like, that's yeah. the training program for money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so money, you were actually, you were actually brought into badminton as a discipline measure. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can yeah. pretty much say that. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do that was so bad in cricket? Well, well, I was, Six I was, <laughs> no, no, I wasn't taking fights. So I was, I was a batsman. And, um, so when I hit the ball, I actually broke someone's window. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, you're too good at it. You just hit it for six, right? Uh, yeah. So I basically hit it too high and it broke someone's window. And then that was just a one incident. I, Hit somebody else in, in their head as well, on their head as well. So, wow. with the ball. But yeah, with the ball. So, I had a few experiences, so, which wasn't good. So, that's why my mum chose to <laughs> put me in <laughs> sort of a yeah. um, uh, safe, you can say that. Safe. Yeah. Yeah. So, you went from breaking windows to breaking ankles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about that one now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, Marnie, we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep going with you um, while we're having a bit of fun. Um, so, with, uh, with COVID happening, how has that affected you personally on your badminton journey? Well, when it first happened, um, Oliver, Anona and myself, we were, in, um, overseas, we were overseas in Europe. Um, we, oh, were, really? we were based in Croatia. Um, yeah. but we were planning to travel for a few different countries to play tournaments. Um, but every time we like, uh, book a flight or something, book accommodation, in the next few hours we'll get a um, notice from BWF or um, post on Facebook uh, saying that tournament has been cancelled and that sort of stuff, which was very, very disappointing because we couldn't even get a refund and we sort of wasted our money there. But also, um, but we didn't waste the time there because we were training uh, with our friends there. Um, so one of me. So he's he's the um, I would say national number one player in Croatia. Um, so yeah, we we trained with them and it was very good experience with them there. Um, but yeah, no, it, it has affected us uh, in a good way and a bad way um, at the same time. Um, so if I when I say good way, we couldn't focus on the things um, when, while we were traveling on ourselves. Mm. Now we can focus on those things. So especially like for me, could be conditioning or could be more strength work, 
which we couldn't do while we were traveling because we had to maintain it rather than trying to build it up, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. But um, we were pretty close to it. It was going to happen there, and we were into the zone. You know, we were in the zone um, to make it happen, and then all of a sudden you get you get to know that, oh, nothing's going to happen now. So we still don't know um, it's going to happen, but we're still going for it, and we're still keeping it positive that we need to keep training hard and we need to still think positive and then, you know, um, start again from, from basically zero and then, yeah, and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely a tricky time for a lot of players because all the schedules and the calendars go out of sync, right? So you don't know what you're doing. Even for next year at this stage, when we're talking now, we're, we're still not sure what's happening. Right. Um, and just for us in Australia here, we, we're preparing for Thomas cup in early October, but, What's the chance, even if it's on, the, I don't think the Australian government is going to let anyone out of here anyway. So, yeah, it, it's, it's really tricky there. So that, from your side of things, money, that's a, a very common thing we've noticed is like, it's, okay, it's, it's a huge disruption. We've got to do what we can with it. Now, Anona, with your preparation for the, the Tokyo Olympics, which are next year now, what, what do you feel that the, the break or this, the COVID situation is going to give you the opportunity to do for your game? Uh, we, so Ollie and I, we started playing together last year, last year, yeah, yeah last, last year. year. And, um, um, our partnership then was quite new and quite raw. So mm-hmm. each time we play a tournament, we kept improving on what we needed to improve on. So with this break, we can focus on more our partnership and on a rotation on how to uh, move around each other and communicate with each, with each other more. Because I see Oliver as a more senior player, and when I was a junior, I would always look up to him and be like, "Whoa!" And he's actually he was, he was kind of scary at the time. I didn't, I didn't know him that well, but after these few months overseas, he's he's a easy person to get around. And Mani and I actually play lots of pranks on him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, you know, so he's actually quite chill and quite relaxed with with it, and yeah, I kind of got a lot more comfortable around him. So yeah. our partnership is going steadily improving, hopefully, if I don't mm-hmm. play too much prank on him. <laughs> yeah. So what's the best prank you played on him? Because, yeah, of course, with, with um, the history of Australia playing New Zealand and things, I know Oliver quite well, and we've had him on the podcast as well, but what's the funniest thing you've done to him, just so that I, I can tell him about uh, it? We can have a bit of a giggle as well. So there was one in Croatia where our, our challenge was not – to complain about <laughs> anything. And, yeah. So, so like if, if we're walking up the steps, we shouldn't complain. Like, oh, these stairs are too much. I'm tired. So then we'll try to catch each other out and it, we have a punishment dice that we have. So Ollie actually said a few complaints and we're like, Oh, Ollie, that's a complaint. And we caught him. Yeah. And there's another one where I would subtly just copy what he's doing. So he would be stretching his arms and I'll just stand next to him and do the same thing. And then he will stretch um, his uh, other parts of his body and I'll just copy, do the same, like get, grab his racket or pretty much just mirroring him what he was doing until he realized what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He would have noticed at the first place and then he'd be like, oh, why yeah. are you following me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, why are you doing this? Oh, why are you doing that? Yeah, so it was sort of funny at, at that time. Yeah. It probably not sounds as funny as as we um speaking it but yeah it was quite funny because he's sort of look, looks like a, he's a, kind of like a serious person <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, sort of stuff in front of him and then he actually like he, i just want him to break a smile at <laughs> like show teeth and make <laughs> yeah i can i can imagine at the time and owner were you just like nah what are you doing copying me <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah um that, and Anona, at the start, Jeff mentioned that you were obviously learning an additional language during this time period. Um, but something that we've read as well in that article by Badminton Oceania is that you've also been studying the virus lately. Oh, it was just um, just general hobby because I yeah, hobby, yeah. made that scientist and and genetics. So I was just I like comparing. So there's the SARS, there's the COVID-19, and there's the Middle Eastern Respiratory System. And they're all from the same virus family. So I was just wondering mm. why this 
COVID-19 virus is a lot different to the others and why it's so hard to find a cure. Mm. Reading different scientific papers and understanding it more. Yeah, the more I read, the more like all these why questions come out. So I just need to find out answers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. what, have, yeah. what have you found? What is the one key, one key fact that you found about COVID-19 uh, compared to those two similar viruses? Ooh. Now that you ask me, I, okay. Um, don't be too hard on me because it might like, it's generally the genetic sequence that the COVID-19 have that, that makes it more easy to attach to the cells in our body. So there's a sequence in the COVID-19 that's a little bit longer than, than the SARS virus, which makes it more virulent on the human body. Mm. I'm not going to go into more details because people might zone off. <laughs> stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We might have some non-scientific people listening to this podcast, so we'll leave it at that. But thank you, Nona, for that insight. Um, so if anyone's looking to cure the coronavirus that's listening to this podcast, make sure you check out the genomic sequence of COVID. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that'll get you to sleep at night. I'm sure. <laughs> well, get to get me to sleep. Maybe I'm not. And Nona's just like, just just like, whoa! I can't believe this is happening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, look, I know that both of you have been traveling a lot overseas for the on on your Olympic qualification journey, and a lot of people may not understand what investment, um, what toll that does take on you emotionally. It's also great fun. You get to meet so many people. And um, Marnie, I know that you got to train with the Center of Excellence, yeah, and you were with um, Kestis. So Kestis was on the podcast. Kestis is a good friend of mine. And I'm sure you learned a lot from him and just being in that environment training. So if I was going to ask both, both of you, for someone who is, say, a developing player, they're maybe just coming out of juniors or they're, they're in seniors, but they do want to try to make it to Olympic Games or play world championships, etc. But they're not really sure whether they should take that investment of oh, spending that money, spending that time, going overseas, playing, being stressful, then coming back and then having to work to make the money again, etc. What would you say to them in terms of what you've learned and the benefits of what you're doing? Because it's I've been through that experience before. It's an experience that you'll take with you for the rest of your life. Um, and it's fantastic. But what about for you guys? What, what has it taught you? Well, I think for me, um, it was a very important thing. Like I always wanted to play in the Olympics and um, you don't get many opportunities like these. Um, so I think for me, it was, I just wanted to go for it no matter how much I need to invest and, you know, how much, of course, there's a lot of investment involved um, since um, we are in New Zealand and it's not a big sport here, unfortunately. Um, so it's, um, at the moment, investment is all self-funded and all the tournaments are, um, trips are all self-funded. Um, but hey, that's literally, I'm learning so many things by, just by traveling overseas, just by playing different players. And I think I will, I will never regret that decision that I made, mm. um, even though I still don't know what's going to happen uh, because of the COVID, um, but I still want to travel. Um, yeah, and I think you do learn a lot of things. Um, so don't, I, would, I wouldn't say just think about the positive side of the um, traveling and positive side of the investment rather than thinking about, hey, what, what's going to happen if I invest that much money and or invest that much time and if I don't get anything out of it, you will definitely get something out of it. Mm -hmm. um that's i that literally um, i'm not saying you can get probably 100 percent out of it but you'll be pretty close to 100 percent getting out of it so i would definitely encourage to all the players if you have even one person if you think you want to travel or you want to try compete in the olympics or commonwealth games or whatever your goal is just do it and go for it um otherwise you when you get older you might regret it that why you didn't do it yeah mm -hmm. i agree Okay. Any, any additional comments, Nana? Uh, so that was similar to me as well, because two years ago I was asked to play Mix of Oli to, <laughs> to start the Olympic campaign. But at that time I wasn't sure. So I said, no, I think it's a bit too stressful for me. <laughs> and then the year after, after Sudaman, 
um, the coach came up to me and said, hey, actually, you guys still have a chance. Do you want to try again? Do you want to try for it? And then I was just thinking, if I don't try for it now, when would be the next time that I'll have this opportunity? So I just went, up, went back to her and said, okay, let's do this. So here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I just, can't... You just go for it. Yeah. yeah. And Marty, what you said as well is, is very true in that maybe... Maybe if you do it, you might not make the Olympic Games. I didn't make the Olympic Games. Um, And maybe you fail, if you want to call it failure, in that way. But the amount that you get back in other aspects of just traveling, getting to know people, just the life experience and just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's amazing what you just learn about yourself as well. And then just the bonds that you create, like with you and Anona, we can definitely tell that you've been traveling together. Because when you travel with someone, or you travel with a team, you get to see them at their highs, you get to see them at their lows, they get to see you at your highs and lows, and you just create just friendships that literally last a whole lifetime. Yeah, definitely. Like, especially for me as well, like, um, I was very fortunate to um, travel to Denmark and then uh, play at Center of Excellence because um, with Casillas, um, so it was really good experience. I played with a um, lot of different players there, and I made a lot of friends there. I didn't know them before at all, and yeah, no, I still I still talk to them. I we are still in touch, and we still talk about what's happening with the COVID and how you how you guys doing, how you guys training, and that sort of stuff. So I think um, yeah, you definitely get something out of it. So don't even think about it. You're never gonna get anything out of it. Yeah. So just I would I would say just go with that and then yeah and get some things out of it. Yeah, great. So everybody listening, that's from Anona and Manny. Just make sure you go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, I want to bring us right back to the New Zealand Badminton League as well. Uh, now that we're starting to wrap up, um, and I just wanted to ask you both, uh, you know, when when you first heard about the league, what were your initial thoughts? Um, so for me, it was very exciting and very interesting because I always see in the other countries, they play, uh, stuff like that, like the league like that. And I always wanted to be a part of the league, even though when I was in India, uh, that's when they first started, uh, doing the, uh, Indian badminton league, which is mm. it's called, uh, premier badminton league now. Mm. Um, it used to be called Indian badminton league. So, um, I was lucky enough to be in a draft order, but I didn't get selected that's that's okay um but yeah it's it's a really good um i would say it's it's a really good feeling um to be part of uh kind of that that kind of opportunity um so when i first heard about it uh when i first um uh, mentioned to us um i felt i literally said yes we are going with it no yeah. matter what um we'll, we'll be in um i will definitely be in uh, no matter what yeah so when we first heard of it joe asked myself, Ollie and Mani about our thoughts around it. And we all three of us just had a positive feedback, just said, yeah, go for it because there's nothing happening. There's no tournaments happening. And this is a good opportunity to, to get everyone in one, together, big, yeah. Yeah, one big group, <clears throat> play against each other, have some fun games, challenge each other, learn new things as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bring up the younger junior players up. Yeah. So yeah. That's, the, that's the fun part of it being able to challenge each other. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And has it been what you expected? Has it lived up to that excitement that you thought it was going to be? I would say probably more than that. Yeah, more, <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. It's, there's more hype. There's more hype. And, yeah, people are loving it. Um, so we're getting good feedbacks from them, which is, which is really good. Um, and, yeah, no, it's, it's, been, it's been great fun so far. Um, and we are hoping that it continues, you know? Yeah. So yeah fantastic. After, yeah. Like even though we're all in different teams, the next day <laughs> we're still one big New Zealand team at You're training. Still friends. <laughs> That's <laughs> what you want. <laughs> next morning, be like, oh, remember last night this and this happened, and and the night before this happened. Yeah, so we're still one huge team. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah that. Yeah. That's great. Now, for for different countries who are thinking, so Henry and I thought of doing a league. This is a, a little while ago, um, but I I'm not sure if you're aware there is an Australian one that is in the works, so uh, of starting. And now I know that Australia and New Zealand always have this very friendly but yet competitive rivalry. So if there was something that you guys have learnt from your league, and let's just say someone was listening from Australia or any kind of any country. What would you say that 
the biggest things that maybe the league has learned that you're aware of? So what maybe didn't work that we know is going to work a little bit better next time? Is there anything in particular? Mm, that's a very good question. I think uh, it's more development for um, the other players because like you don't usually play with this, um, your, like you have your set partners, right? But in the league, you're playing with different people and yeah. with that you're learning how to communicate with them and which like bringing, like let's say I was playing with a junior player and for myself to guide them around the court as well and to give them the confidence to be able to speak up to us being the senior players. So it, it goes both ways. Like we have to make them feel comfortable and make them understand the matches. And at the same time, they can feed back, back to us on what could work better and what we can learn from them. Mm. Yeah. It's development, more development. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, I think for, for every everybody listening, uh, potentially badminton New Zealand that's listening, uh, the the potential for creating more opportunities for development is a way that we can make this league even better and make potential new leagues great as well. Uh, so thank you for that, Anona. And, okay, so let's, let's recap on the New Zealand Badminton League, shall we? So we're at the fourth week of the seven-week period. Uh, we have the finals on the 28th and 29th of July in about two weeks' time. And you can watch it on the Sky Sport Next YouTube channel for all those listeners and potentially viewers out there at the moment. If you want to keep in touch with the progress of the league, then you can check out, uh, I can see that Anona's showing her, her little uh, her logo there, the One Pure Wolves. Go, go the One Pure Wolves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get more than equal third, shall we? <laughs> and so if you want to follow their journey, then certainly you can check out the uh, New Zealand Badminton League uh, Instagram. You can check out the franchise team's Instagrams. You can check out the individual players' Instagram. So there's many opportunities for you guys to get in touch and follow along this exciting journey uh, that Manny and Anona are on. So, so the both of you, thank you so much again for coming on to the Badminton Podcast. Thank you for, thank having, you for us. having us. If we had a bit of fun there, I know that Henry and I definitely did. It's always good to talk to, yeah, it's, it's good, always good to have a laugh and talk about Badminton, which is what we always do love talking about. And look, for everyone listening as well, we just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you have enjoyed this episode, or any of our other episodes, or if you just love badminton for the sport that it is, like us, then please make sure that you share this podcast with your friends, families, players, colleagues, etc. Mm-hmm. Just share it with everyone. <laughs> the, the Korean, um, <laughs> the love heart. <laughs> Um, and also make sure you do have a look in the episode description because you'll find all the links, all the handles, everyone that you can follow sh- and you can share those around as well. Make sure you do tune into the finals, which is free live and free on YouTube. So make sure you do so, or you can also watch it previous to the finals or after the finals for any highlights. Cause there's lots of high level badminton. That's very, very entertaining there. And if you've seen all 20, also Instagram accounts and you want to get in touch with us, then <laughs> our Instagram handle is at Volantware, V-O-L-A-N-T-W-E-A-R or the Badminton Podcast. We also have Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn and TikTok accounts and there is definitely our website as well, www.volantware.com where you can buy some great badminton clothes that are not the typical un- uh, conventional unsightly Uh, badminton wear that you see it's clothes that you can wear anywhere for 32 dollars and delivered to your home so (laughs) feel free to reach out to us and ask any questions or request any topics as well for future episodes we're here to serve the badminton community and always are looking to do better at what we do already so please give us any feedback as well and thank you again anona and manny for this episode and thank you to badminton new zealand and we'll see you all on the next episode Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video podcast, please make sure you like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. You can also find the link to the audio podcast in the description below. And as always, let's show the world how incredible badminton is.